Welcome to Color Your World. I'm Linda Fissler. Today we're at the Middletown Art Center and I'm with Executive Director Pat Belisle. Hi Pat. Hi Linda. Well, this place holds, it, it's very near and dear to my heart and you know why. It's mm -hmm. because I started painting here in 1990 and I started with Larry Dowd. And we'll talk about the programs a little bit later, but for now what I wanted you to talk about was the center started in 1957, is that correct? That's correct. And there was actually a group of women who wanted to get art into Middletown, and it was the Federation Club of Women. And they started in the basement of the uh, American Legion. And every time it would rain, they'd have to make sure they got there and pick everything <laughs> up off the floor so it wouldn't get wet. Oh, they got tired of doing that over the years and decided, well, what can we do to possibly improve this situation? So it became the umbrella company called AIM, Arts in Middletown, which actually housed not only the Middletown Art Center, but the Middletown Symphony, the Arts and Residency, the Youth Symphony, um, it was also the Summer Youth Theater, and also the Middletown Lyric Theater. So they were all showcased under this one roof, and we shared the building. As time progressed, we decided to basically go our own directions, and the building was given to the Middletown Arts Center since we had the biggest clientele, and the most use of the building at that time. That was around 1975. The building was built, and then we took it over probably about 19, I think it, no, actually it was 2003, I yeah. believe. Yes. Because I've been painting yes. here for a while yes. when all that happened. So. <laughs> so many different dates. Yes. <laughs> and no card to look at, so That's you're doing right. really well. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of memory here. <laughs> so anyway, when we took the building over, um, we also took on all the expenses of the building. We are a nonprofit organization, and we rely very heavily on contributions and grants, this sort of thing. And of course, being an educational facility, we do have a lot of classes here, and we have to support those classes and our students. So, let's talk a little bit about your programs. But first, mm -hmm. I want to talk about this handsome guy standing yes. between us. <laughs> so, where did Matt come from? How did this come about? Actually, we were trying to figure out a mascot for the center. And this has been going on for several years now. Since I've been here, it was actually 2006 when I started. And we kept tossing it back and forth. What can we do? What can we do? Well, it ended up that in one of our uh, board meetings, we decided, why don't we do something with our contribution box? Mm -hmm. Nobody sees it. It just sits there, and it's ignored. <laughs> and we need money to help facilitate our programming. You're so, our nonprofit, so. So we figured why not try and enhance that little ismo. So we came up with Mac. And he was actually crafted out of um, wood for us, of course, and then painted by one of our own instructors, Shelley uh, Sizemore. She took it upon herself to not make him into a butler, but to make him <laughs> into a nice French artist. Yeah. So we have Maximilian here. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he's actually really cute. He's on wheels, so he can... He's portable, he can, he yeah, can move around, move we can around. put him wherever we want. Yeah. Yes. So, and he's usually standing right up here towards the end, so as you come into the exhibit hall, you can uh, say hello to Mac and just help actually provide a little That's extra right. incentive here. That's so, right. <laughs> so we started That's talking a little bit about the programs. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we have, this is the actually the uh, exhibit hall. That's correct. So mm -hmm. in here you have a, a number of exhibits done throughout the year, but the one that's here right now le actually leads us into some of the programs that you yes. offer. And this yes. is uh, Tomorrow's Artist Today. Yes, TAT for short. Yes, and yes. That's, uh, there's a reason why you say TAT, because I always end up reversing the two. <laughs> it yes. doesn't make sense. So mm -hmm. Tomorrow's Artist Today or TAT, tell mm -hmm. us about that. Well, it's a program that started, oh, I'd have to say 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it actually started in one of our classrooms. It right. was Steve Peruca who was teaching the mixed media class. Um, and the group that gets together every week decided, well, you know, we should do something for the young, for the teenagers who want to actually go into art. Right. So why don't we establish some sort of a competition to allow them to go through the experiences of going through a juried and a judged exhibit. Yeah. Just kind of walk around so that we can get some of the pictures of the okay. students did for All us. Right. So. All right, as you'll see, we have some first, second, place winners on this mm -hmm. wall. Um, we, these are 13 to 18 year olds um, and they are from a 50 mile radius mm -hmm. of Middletown. So we bring in a lot of different artwork from a lot of the different schools in the area. Right. And we've gone as far south as Westchester. I was just going to so ask you. So yes. we 
We also have gone as far north as pa uh, Springboro, I believe, is where we have gone up into the north. Okay. Is there any mileage? Uh, I mean, about a 50 mile radius 50 miles, of Middletown. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's so. actually for all of our competitions. We okay. use the same radius. And then we have a, a best of show winner over here. Yes. Um, Madison is Perry is actually the individual who paint, who actually drew this. This is um, drawing. Uh, she has actually taken classes here with Linda Fisher, one of our instructors who's been here over 20 years. And there's always a, a misconception because my last name is Fissler with an L. Yes. But Linda Fisher is yes. a drawing teacher and they always yes. end up asking, you know, That's correct. me about drawing, unfortunately, but I'm an oil painter, so <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't work too well. So, but but yeah. you know a lot about drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not as much as Linda, but <laughs> the other Linda. So, yeah, but Madison, but thank you. Madison actually is 17 years old and she is graduating this, this June, so she will be moving on to college. She is going to be minoring in art. She won't be majoring, but she someday would like to be a, uh, an architect. So oh. would kind of like to get into some of that arrangement Wonderful. for herself. So Beautiful she's had house. a very good start here. Yeah. <laughs> so there's the TAP program, and then yes. there are other youth programs, I assume? That... Yes, we have several classes every session for anywhere from pre-kindergarten up to an adulthood. Okay. If um, if they want to actually be in an adult class, we do allow them to go into the drawing class. Um, that's usually where they want to begin, and they get one-on-one -on -one training with the instructors there. It's actually the best place for them to be in, because the drawing class um, is the basic foundation for painting, and actually any of the medias that they offer here. It's so important to draw something correctly because the eye recognizes when it's not drawn correctly. That's so correct. It's actually wonderful that you start them off in that education of drawing first. Mm -hmm. And then we have several um, workshops that we allow to have our students come to. Um, they can be anything from nature on to painting to clay classes. We offer a lot of different media for the young and it gives them an opportunity to be creative and experience the arts on their own. And there's also a uh, program I think that you just started that you actually go to some of the schools yes. because funding's being cut in the schools and it's, it's, it's a shame because like I said with drawing you have to know all this geometry and, and stuff. Uh, it is, it's more scientific than you think it is. So you do have a school yes. after school program. Yes, we actually had an idea to put a Mac mobile together, which is Art on Wheels. And what instilled this in us is because the schools in the area and around us are actually cutting art in their programs. So the children need to have art in their, their lives and their, and their growth. So we decided, well, why don't we put some sort of a program together where we can go to the schools after school and provide them with art. So we call it our Art on the Go. And eventually, if we ever do get the wheels, we're still trying to get the funds for that, but if we ever do get the wheels to be able to promote this, we even want to bring our mascot along with us and let Matt come and just be part of the kids' programming. Maybe they can draw their own little visions of him. That'd be great. But yeah. we also go to retirement communities as well with the Art on the Go program. So it isn't only for the youth, it's also for the adults who can't come here. Oh, that's wonderful. So I, I was um, part of the first art auction that took care of that, yes. or that took care of it actually, started raising funds for that yes. particular um, program. program. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, we have um, so many other things that happen here at MAC. One of them is naturally the adult programs that you have. Yes. And I thought maybe what we would like to do is show the people at home, how the art center is set up for one of those that would be programs and, and talk to. a little bit about the other medias that you offer here besides tat and, and oil painting, which they know about from me. So mm, that, that would be lovely. I'd yeah. love to show you. The okay, well, let's facility. go, let's okay. go back All to right. that. Thank you. Room. <laughs> so Pat, in the last, in the exhibit hall, we talked about uh, drawing a lot with Linda Fisher mm -hmm. um, and now we want to talk a little bit about the other medias that you offer here. Um, okay. They usually take place in a different room mm -hmm. than where we are here. These are the watercolor, oil and acrylics. Right, what we call rooms. our wet studios. Okay, <laughs> yeah, because we're all, messy. they all need water in order to clean up so yeah. we usually try and keep them where the sinks are. Okay. Alright, and we usually have 
classes Monday through Thursday and then some again on Saturday. And even in the evenings? Yes, in the so. evenings. We, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're 9 to 9. So we have classes throughout the whole day. Um, we have classes in these rooms of oil paintings, mixed media, all media, which they can even do some drawing in here if they'd like to, as well as acrylics. The education programs here mm -hmm. at Middletown Art Center are a great way to start your art career and just actually in, even if you don't want an art career even if you just want to come in and paint it's got a lot of camaraderie mm -hmm. uh, among the students you make fast friends here because yes. you're all suffering through the same <laughs> experiences so um, so tell us a little bit more about the oil classes and, and okay well other than yourself like you said Shelly teaches the oils and Diane Mueller also teaches oils and oil and acrylics they were kind of run together as far as they both come in tubes <laughs> one dries a lot it. faster and the, other, and the other one takes a little bit longer to dry. Right. But uh, all of our instructors can teach both. Now Linda is strictly, Linda here, Fissler, is strictly oils. Uh, you, you come to my class, I convert you from acrylic to oil pretty quickly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so but that's about all we have for the oil. So it's just and Shelly and I that teaches. And Diana. And Diana. Teach it, yes. And teach, mm -hmm. Okay. And Rosemary teaches it as part of the mixed media. Oh, right. All okay. media class. So. Right. so again, it is a good education facility mm -hmm. for that. We actually have a couple areas that we haven't touched. One is photography, and we don't, since the photographers aren't back there doing their, their mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. um, we can talk a little bit about photography here yes. as well. Yes. So you offer a photography course. That's correct. We have beginners and intermediate, and then we also have Photoshop. Steve Weigold is actually the instructor for our photography now. We used to have Ben McIntyre, and he retired and went to Florida. Lucky, lucky, <laughs> lucky. And, uh, but Steve picked right up, and his classes have been full. He teaches youth classes as well. And it's fun to see the little kids out there with their cameras, and he takes them outside, <laughs> and they're taking pictures of the water fountain and the yeah. statues and the flowers. And they do some pretty darn good work. They know how to operate a camera better than I do. Yeah, they're, uh, he, Steve does a really wonderful job of um, getting the students involved in what they're doing, because typically you can just go out, take pictures, come in, to learn how to Photoshop them, mm -hmm. that's all he covers. But instead, what Steve does is he brings in interesting setups. And um, mm -hmm. my husband happens to be in the photography class, and one of the setups that they did was smoke. And he got some pretty interesting abstract photos of those. Of well, the it's smoke interesting and, like, you mention that because one of the students did put his smoke photo oh. into our competition that's coming up next exhibit. Oh yeah, well we'll need to talk about those too. Oh, yes. But first, mm -hmm. let's talk about the ceramics and the pottery classes. Yes. And let's go over and look at that particular uh, setup, that particular mm -hmm. area for that program. On our way over to the clay studio, I will say that we also have glass fusing and slumping class that goes on here okay. as well. And we also have the enameling class and that's in the little middle room between this room and the clay studio. But right. we have a lot of space in this building that people don't realize is here when you look at the front of the building. It's a lot larger than what it appears right. and we cover a lot of ground here. Yeah, and, and for the, the cost that you're offering the programs for um, and the space that you have here is just amazing. And you know, to have this type of a art center in a small town like Middletown is really unbelievable. Well, our goal here is to offer these educational classes at the lowest cost to the people in the community. Um, I must say that in our research, we have found that we are the lowest on our prices and our average price for a class is twelve dollars and fifty cents a class a class yeah. yes because you can't do it by class you have terms you have terms we have eight week terms for adults and four week terms for the, the youth and we used to have the eight weeks for the youth but decided that it might be a little more advantageous with the kids schedules today right. to let them come in for four weeks at a time so yeah. we try and make that happen for them. A little less planning when it comes that's to kids. Right. That's right, that's right, that's so, right. Okay, so let's head okay. over to the right. ceramic studio. Sounds good. So I'm going this way. Lead us, lead us on, Pat. Okay. <laughs> So Pat, we're in the uh, pottery and ceramics yes. area, so tell yes. us a little bit about that. This I am assuming is um, earthenware that's... Yes, this has been fired the first time Okay. after it's been built. Mm -hmm. Along the wall, you're going to see all of the clay that's under plastic. That actually is pieces that they're working on and they have to keep them moist okay. while they're working on them. So they keep them in the plastic. Once they've dried enough, they will put them in the kiln to get it to this state. Once this state is done, then they go ahead and glaze it 
which is the colors that you'll see on your pottery, and then they put it in the kiln once again to fire it, and then the finished products come out. Okay, then they, do they put a glaze on that afterwards? Not, no, th it's just two it's firings. Two firings? Okay. Unless there's a special project that they're doing where they want to put more than one color glaze on, they can do it in different stages. Okay. But the more you fire it, the, the easier the it, well, the easier it is for it to break. Oh, so you, you know, want to fire it as heat. less as yeah. you can. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably fire it until it breaks anyway. But <laughs> well, you're each time you put it in the kiln, you're taking a chance anyway. And this is considered ceramics. Yes. Okay. Yes, pottery, ceramics. It's done with mud, clay, and there's different kinds. There uh, is the the reddish color, there's a gray color clay, and then there's also the porcelain, which is the white. Okay, and you can tell we're not touching these very much because no. they will break even at this, this stage. This is yeah. probably the most delicate stage right. right here. So they pick this up and then they, they paint it and then it they, goes into the Well, as you'll see, they've yeah, done some okay. painting here, and then they will probably put another glaze over that whole piece okay. and then fire it in the kiln, okay. and then it'll be complete. So they're actually taking a block of yes. something and forming it themselves. That's this, correct. This isn't a ready-made, comes out of a no, kit. No, no, no. This okay. is all hands-on. Um, and you do. You get a 25-pound block of clay. I've taken the class one session, so I know a little bit about it, but not a whole lot. <laughs> and then you have to mold it into whatever you want. And there are molds that you can place your bowls around, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, this particular piece, I'm going to pick it up, but this is what we call a pinch pot. And this is all done by hand. And it's okay. just little squirrely yes. things that you put together and you use a little vinegar and the vinegar will enhance it and, and glue it together. And then you, put, and this is all done over a mold once you get the finished product done. Right. And then you, you glaze it <laughs> and you put it in the kiln and it comes out a pretty color. <laughs> and the interesting <laughs> thing about the glazes is that when you put them on the piece, mm -hmm. they don't look anything like the color that they're gonna come out when they come out of the kiln. Yeah. So I remember my mom doing some of the ceramic stuff, but mm -hmm. hers they actually had um, them already molded and everything for her. She and did a whole nativity set. Yeah, did the painting. She did the, the yeah. scraping off where I guess the two molds came together, scraped them off, and then painted them, and then very popular yeah. in the '70s, probably. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened to that nativity yes. scene, but, it, but it's we also gone. have the wheel, you know, which people yes. actually sit at the wheels and they do the actual. And I'm trying to see if there's any pieces up here that might be wheel, but these look like no, they're, all they're all hand piece. Yeah. All hand piece. Well, this here's a wheel right here. Oh, okay. This piece is done on the wheel. And then they apply the different eyes and then the little wings that are over here on the owl just by using flat pieces and glu gluing them on with the vinegar solution. Okay. So, but uh, this and here would be a wheel piece too. Yeah. This is a, a formed on the wheel. I have not gotten into the wheels myself. And that has, I mean, I mean, from Ghost, you know, everybody's yeah. Yeah. Ghost, right? I the know, wheel yeah. thing. Uh, and it's yeah. not that romantic, right? No. It's, it's very so, messy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very wet, very yes, messy. Yes. Uh -huh. So, um, and that takes place. And who are the instructors for? The instructors for our clay are actually Jean Ann Bollinger and Adriana De Palma. And they've been teaching here since before I came here eight years ago. And then we also have Dennis Allen, who teaches our youth. Oh, okay. And the youth classes are awesome. I mean, he will have a full table. He can only take, I think, up to eight students at a time because they get a little wild sometimes. <laughs> but they create some of the most unique little pieces, all done by hand. They don't use the wheel at this point, but it, his classes are always full. Uh, build those strong muscles. But in who their doesn't hands? like playing with the mud? You know, yeah, that's exactly. primarily what it's like. They're probably sitting out on mud. summer days after the storm, making stuff right. out of mud. Why, why <laughs> doesn't it hold together? Yeah, right. <laughs> and then there's one more area that we're yes. not going to walk into right now, but it's the jewelry. Yes, area. we have a jewelry studio. It's fairly small. We can only uh, house not eight people in there at a time, mm -hmm. and but we do have classes every day of the week, and those two are also full, and we usually a lot of times we'll have waiting lists for them. And when I say jewelry, it's not your, your, your jewelry that's made with beads and everything. It's actually fine metals. It's done with uh, coppers and brass and gold and silver. Okay. So, and then of course your stones, your, jewel, your jewels, that kind of thing. So it is a high quality jewelry that's being made. Okay, great. Well, I want to walk back over to the exhibit hall because I want to ask you a question over there about your proudest moments. And a lot of okay. them, I think, took place in that exhibit hall. So let's yes. walk back across. Yes. Okay. And you, as you can see, this is a wonderful facility. It's, it's a huge facility. It's got 
rooms that it can dedicate to specific media. And honestly, I've traveled throughout the United States doing workshops and different things. And this is a, a world-class, first-class facility. I've, I've not seen very many like this around the United States. So, keep, you know, it's right here in Middletown. So yes. let's go back over to the exhibit hall and take okay. a few more uh, right. pictures of the children's work and we'll go from there. So here we are back in the exhibit hall, wonderful, huge, big exhibit hall that can show many, many, many um, pictures yes. and paintings yes. and photographs and everything. So tell us a little bit about your proudest moments. Okay, my proudest moments, of course, not only the education facility that we have here and giving all of our students an opportunity, but the exhibit hall showcases some of the most awesome exhibits annually. We have, we, we bring in the American Watercolor Society every other year, we try to. We bring in the Ohio Watercolor Society exhibits in here as well, but we've also had national artists. We brought Kevin McPherson in here with the help of you, of course, <laughs> you introduced us to him, and that was an awesome event for us. We actually used it as a fundraiser too. And then we've had uh, also George Nock, who is artist and sculptor out of Georgia, and he came in last year and actually he will be one of our guest artists also this year at our annual auction. Well, it's actually triannual now. We had started with that annually for many years, but all of our artists who contribute their paintings actually give them to us 100%, so we started doing it every three years, so it wouldn't cost them quite so much to have them framed and, and donate them to us. So we have our auction coming up again in May of this year, so we're looking forward to that. And having him and John Ruthven will also be our guest artists there, so that's another opportunity. Meeting all of these fabulous artists has just been a wonderful experience for me, and that's what keeps me pumped up and going, and being proud of what we are here, because we pull in, for the community, a wonderful line of interest for the arts, and we want to make that continue. I'm hoping that it can go on again for another 57 years. I won't be spearheading it, but <laughs> somebody else will. So, so you found it 114? Yes. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Not that you're that old now, no. right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I know there's one more proudest moment. Yes. And as we go yes. and walk out that way to show you, it's the lobby of the, of the yes. building that has been renovated. Mm -hmm. And um, just talk a little bit, if you will, about the renovation that you did here. It's, um, well, wonderful warm colors. Yes, we actually, with the, with the building being built in the 70s, we decided that it needed to have some sort of an uplift. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and applied for diff some different grants and got the monies together in order to facilitate new lighting, new ceiling, new reception area, new carpet. So it was actually a full full renovation it ended up being more than just a rinse and right. w I'm very proud of what we have accomplished it's very artistic and it gives a wonderful opportunity for all of our students and our instructors to showcase their wares that we actually sell here at the Art Center and we have a 30% commission off of their pieces and people can come in at any time and and purchase gifts and uh, personal items here right and you actually have a gallery out here too, so an opportunity to show yes. another local artist. Yes, um, and we change that out about every eight weeks, mm -hmm. and they are able to showcase on the four walls here their artwork, and it gives them the opportunity and exposure. But then we also have another eight weeks where we take four of their pieces and bring them up to the Atrium Medical Center and showcase them up there in their actual dining room area. So it gives the uh, visiting patrons there an opportunity to enjoy the art as well and more exposure to the artist. So if an artist is interested in exhibiting either here in the lobby or in the exhibit hall, do they have someone that they can contact off your website maybe? Yes, they can contact either myself and then I will get in touch with Rick Davies or Jack Howard who is our exhi exhibit committee chairs and they in turn will get in contact with the artist and discuss seeing their work and talking with them further on what it is that we can do together to collaborate. So really the Middletown Art Center is about education and also community service. Which That's is correct. Yeah. Yes, it is. So. We are here for the community. We are here for the, everyone who wants to come in and enjoy the art. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for being well, with us, Pat. thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. This has been fun. Yeah. Linda, I wish you a lot of luck <laughs> with Color Your World. Yes. I know this is an opportunity for you and for our community to be able to have you showcase this. Yeah, it's been fun. Pat and I have worked together a lot in a number of different um, capacities here with the Art Center. And, yes. Uh, really have enjoyed working with you, so thank you so thank much you. for, thank for you. joining us. So once again, another beautiful uh, piece of downtown that features the arts and artists. And uh, if you're looking for something to do, um, you don't have to be super talented to do these courses. The teachers are very, very helpful, very enthusiastic to get you interested in the arts and having them do the arts. So please come down and check them out. Uh, they'll be actually very happy to, uh, to help you and accommodate you. So once again, that's a wrap for Color Your World. Tune in next time. I'm sure we'll have another little piece of Middletown that uh, you may not have discovered yet, or maybe you have. And just join us again. It's, it's just so much fun to discover all these little gems in Middletown. So thank you again for watching Color Your World, and we'll see you next time. I'm Linda Fistler.